Hello friends, this video on states of matter part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 13. So let's take one graph on the behavior of real gas. So the real gas actually deviates from the ideal gas. We'll, we'll explain you why. If you see, let's take this graph, the first graph, graph 1, and this is graph 2 actually. So we have this formula PV is equal to NRT. So we talk about constant temperature your n is constant, constant uh, constant number of moles, this value is constant, right? PV is equal to constant, will be a constant value for a constant temperature and constant number of moles. So in that case, if you draw a graph, if this is a real gas, this is the ideal gas equation. So if you draw a plot for PV versus P, PV versus P, doesn't matter, it will be constant value. You draw a plot PV versus any of the item, if you draw PV versus P or V, it has to be same because PV is constant. So for ideal gas, this has to be constant. Hope you understand. See, PV is equal to NRT is my ideal gas equation. If I put temperature and the number of moles constant, the right hand side becomes constant. That means I say that P into V is constant. So if my P into V is constant, if I plot PV with any other parameter, let's suppose P, it will be a straight line because it's ideal gas. Now, if you see, when the scientists have done this experiment for CO, carbon monoxide, methane, hydrogen and helium, they found a graph like this. So if you see in case of methane, it dropped and then it went up. In case of helium and hydrogen, straight line. In case of carbon dioxide also, carbon monoxide also, it went down and then went up. So this is the experimented value of the real gas. Here also if you see, if you draw a PV volume, PV, if, I, if you see PV is equal to constant, that is if you say P as, uh, what do you call, volume as X and P as Y, so you get XY is equal to constant, right? So if XY is equal to constant, you'll draw, you'll get a graph like this. So P, for ideal gas, this was a graph, but for real gas, the uh, in this case, for helium, when this uh, chemist did the experiment, they found the graph like this. And if you see, the lines are not matching. That means we can say that the ideal gas deviates from real gas. Ideal gas deviate from real gas or the real gas deviates from ideal gas. Both the same. That means we are trying to say that the behavior of real gas and ideal gas is not the same. How? Because when we draw the, when we drew the PV graph, the real gas and ideal gas didn't match. Also when we drew the PV and P graph, we saw that the ideal gas was a straight line parallel to x-axis, but the a real gas should deviation, right? The, the values change based on the temperature. Also to note here is this, when the pressure is zero, these values match with the ideal gas. So at a zero pressure, this match. So now, now with this uh, discussion, you must be having a lot of questions in your mind, right? Why? So with the last discussions, you must be having a lot of doubts in the mind. Why do gas behave, uh, deviate from idle gas? Or you'll say, why do real gas deviate from idle gas? Right? What are the conditions in which the real gas deviates from idle gas? The question is, why do they deviate? We have the answer. The answer is the incorrect assumptions in the kinetic theory. So in the kinetic theory, we assume that there is no force of attraction between the molecules of gas. We also assume that the volume of the uh, molecules of the gas is negligible compared to the total volume. This is incorrect. Because there are two uh, molecules, there will be some intermolecular force, which we have studied, right? Maybe dispersion force or dipole dipole force, there has to be some force between the molecules. Also, it says that the volume of the gas is negligible. That is not true. It will occupy some volume at least, right? So these two incorrect assumptions explains why my real gas, because in case of real gas, there is some inter in, in real gas, there is some intermolecular force and there is some volume of the gas. These two are there. But in ideal gas, in ideal gas, In ideal gas, there is no intermolecular force assumed and there is no volume occupied. So these two assumptions are different. 
and that's why we are getting different result for ideal gas and real gas. So now the question is when do real gas behave like ideal gas? We told that real gas behave like ideal gas under some condition. So as I told for a real gas to behave like ideal gas I should have minimum intermolecular force should be almost zero and my volume should also tend to zero. So if I satisfy these two conditions, my real gas will also behave like ideal gas. Correct? So let's see how can we do this. So if the pressure is low and the temperature is high, my real gas will behave like ideal gas. Why? If this is my container and this uh, pressure I'm talking about the external pressure. So if I apply very low pressure on this, very low external pressure on this, what will happen is these molecules will be apart. They'll be apart. They'll be moving apart, right? They'll be apart. Since they'll be apart, the, inter the distance between these two molecules will be more. There'll be very less intermolecular force. Correct. Also, when you increase the temperature, you increase the temperature, same thing. These molecules will move at a higher speed. Since they'll be moved at a higher speed, the, the chance that attraction between these molecules will be less because they'll be all busy in moving around. They'll not be stationary. Right, so there also the intermolecular force will decrease. So high temperature and low pressure will make sure that the intermolecular force is decreased. Correct. If you see in this case, I explained the intermolecular force is almost nil in this condition. Right. Now there has to be some value that up to a particular pressure and particular temperature. A particular gas behaves like a uh, ideal gas. What is that temperature and how it is dependent on? That depends on the nature of the gas. So if you see here in this case, so if you see in this case, for example, if I take hydrogen, so the, the pressure will be something else, the minimum pressure will be something else, and the temperature will be something else. For helium, it may be different, right? So this temperature at which the real gas obeys ideal gas laws and that temperature is called my boil temperature. The temperature at which my real gas follows uh, behaves like a ideal gas and that temperature is called boil temperature. So for any gas if I say the boil temperature is x and I am uh, putting that gas in that temperature that means the gas behaves like a real uh, ideal gas and we can apply the ideal gas equation very easily. Correctly? Hope you understand this. See as I told that in all the scenarios, the real gas don't behave like ideal gas because there's an intermolecular force existing between them and the volume occupied is not negligible. But if you increase the temperature and decrease the pressure, then it behaves like a real gas. It behaves like ideal gas. And these pressure and temperature is not same for all the uh, gases. Different uh, gas will have different value of pressure and temperature at which they behave like a ideal gas. So for temperature, they have given a specific name that temperature is called the boil temperature, the temperature at which uh, ideal gas behaves like a, sorry, the real gas behaves like ideal gas, that temperature is called the boil temperature or the boil point. And this is our real gas equation. So if we see, as I told, the volume is not negligible, right? The volume is not negligible, it has some values. So as I told, the volume of the molecules is not negligible, it has some values. So here also what we'll do, we'll take that value. So this B is nothing but the constant, this A and B are constant here that will take care of the volume part. So here uh, pressure and volume part. Since the volume of the molecule is not negligible, it has some values, we'll subtract this part here, the molecule volume part here. And the pressure is some extra pressure. So we'll add this A by V square, correct? And this instead of PV is equal to NRT, it is P plus A by V square into Vm minus B is equal to This is a real gas equation based on the experiments. They have given the constant value of this and we have got this real gas equation. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, 
study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.